Today I'm going to paint some hyperspace phasing in effects on my Hexmark destroyers and it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, it's time to paint my two Hexmark destroyers. I've got one built as the instructions tell you and one which I've converted. I'm going to link you up to the conversion video at the end of this one. But today, like I said, we're going to attempt to paint these phasing in effects. Now, previously, when I was going to try mm -hmm. this type of effect, it was going to be on my Tyranid Death Leapers, but they're more of a stealth type unit, a little bit like Tau stealth suits. You may have seen them painted in this way previously, where you have half of the model painted exactly like it should be, and the other half of the model is painted to blend into the background, a little bit like Predator. But these guys, well, it's slightly different because they are literally phasing in from hyperspace. So they're not there and then they're there. So that was the effect that I wanted to try to paint. So the first thing I had to do was work out the standard color scheme for the Hexmark destroyers. I read the codex and it said that these used to once be death marks. So I thought, I'll just paint them like my death mark. So that's just the traditional silver and green color. All of my HQ units are gold. And whilst these are characters, they're still an elite choice. So I thought, yep, we'll go for the death marks scheme, silver and green. Now I didn't paint this effect blind. I did some test painting first. I used my very faithful Immortal, who's been painted a hundred times and I tried a few things out with it and I concluded that something like this would work pretty well. So this is what I was aiming for. So the first thing I did is I went over the whole of the miniature with a watered down Abaddon black. Although I had primed it black, of course, in the first place, the primer black is a slightly different color to what's in the pot. And as I'm going to have a good amount of this miniature black, it meant that I could touch up with the paint and I wouldn't get a different black. So I painted it black and we were ready for the next step. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I have a lot of painting tutorials for my Necrons on the channel already and a lot of this is going to be uh, repetitive to that. So if you haven't seen my painting tutorials, there's a link to the playlist in the description below. But I used some dry brushing techniques. I dry brushed all over the miniature with Iron Breaker first and then I dry brushed the bottom of the miniature, that's the Scorpet Destroyer type legs with lead voucher. And I dry brushed the top of the miniature, the body and the arms with Rune Fang Still. It's how I do my Necrons. It gives a good effect and because you're dry brushing you tend to end up with a worn metal look. And all of the recesses will be black already from the base coat. So that's how I painted my silver. I did leave some of the areas black where I knew they would be black, but I painted the majority of the miniature silver because I knew that, well, the effects might be quite awkward to get accurate where obviously there's so many limbs and arms to actually try to paint around. So I thought it's best to have more silver and then we can go back in with the black afterwards. And that's what I did next. I used some watered down Chaos Black and I painted in the areas that I wanted to be in hyperspace and left the silver parts for the areas that are going to be actually appearing. I tried to paint the join of these two areas in a straight line so I could imagine sort of phasing in in a straight line. Although to be fair, where there's quite a few sort of limbs, it was quite difficult to get that straight line going right around the miniature. Having said that, it's only a straight line in my head. I mean, who's to say they phase in in a straight line? There may be a bit of a curve to that anyway. But I tried my best to get it into a straight line because I thought, well, the effect would just look slightly better if it was like that. Now, I'm sure you've noticed I'm painting the original miniature without it glued to the base. And one reason for that is just to make it easier to paint. And it was a lot easier to paint, especially with this phasing in effect. The other one which I've converted is uh, joined in the middle and I've got it actually pinned. So what I had to make sure is that the black line that I was making matched up on both halves of the bodies uh, when they were joined together. So I just carefully did this and I made it look as straight as I could. 
Okay, so let's quickly go through the next stages. So I painted the rocks on the base with Caliban Green. I then dry brushed it with Warpstone Glow. Then I dry brushed it with Mute Green. I painted all of the orbs and all of the wires that I wanted green with Warpstone Green. Several coats, about three coats of watered down paint just built up the colour. I also painted the symbol on the chest and some of the inside areas of the guns. The next layer was mute green and again I just painted over the top of the warpstone green just leaving the recessed areas with the original colour. The wires were slightly different because I planned to do some blending on them so I blocked in the mute green in the centre of the wire so then I could go back in and just blend the two colours together. And that's what I actually did next. I got the mute green and the warpstone green on my wet palette, fairly watered down, and then I blended the two layers together. I made a video about how I did this in my Ophidian painting tutorial, so again I'll link that up in the description below for you to check out if you want a bit more info. But with the wires blended, that was the green done. I also painted their faces white as well, just several layers just built up the white colour and of course I dotted in the green eyes. So we are ready for the special effects. So the colours we are going to use are Warpstone Green, Mute Green, Nurgling Green, Skull White and the Tesseract Glow Technical Paint. I'm going to start though with Warpstone Glow. I'm going to use a brand new dry brush because I want to be quite accurate with this dry brushing. I'm going to put the paint on my brush and then obviously take the paint off. Typical dry brushing techniques. I'm going to dry brush around the join from black to silver. I'm going to make this line fairly wide because this is the sort of outer edge of the glow it is fairly difficult to get in with all of the wires and guns, so I just took my time and I just dry brushed around the line all the way around the miniature. I then repeated this with mute green, but I tried to leave the outer edge of the previous coat visible, so basically just on the inner edge with this colour, and again I did that all around the join. Now I found the second dry brush wasn't quite bright enough, not as bright as I wanted it to be, so I switched techniques and I did some stippling. Uh, so I took the brush and I took some paint off of the brush, but not as much as I would have done for the dry brushing, and then I just sort of dabbed the brush around the join, and that actually really worked well. I got a slightly brighter effect, uh, but it was still pretty simple to do. Right, the next stage is Nurgling Green. I swapped out my dry brush for a size one brush and I painted a jagged line in between the dry brushing that we'd done. So you could see the two different dry brushed colors and then the Nurgling Green in the middle. Now I say a jagged line because I did want it to be sort of an exact line, uh, very straight. I wanted it to be a little bit wavery because I thought the effect would be better that way. So next it's white and I dropped down the brush size to a size zero so that I could paint in between the Nurgling green line. Again, a slightly jagged line. I'm still trying to keep the whole effect in a straight line going around but also having the line a little bit wavery at the same time. And of course the Hexmark Destroyer conversion which I'm painting, which is in two halves, as I was doing all of these layers, I was putting it together just to make sure that all of the effects actually match up. Next I got the Tesseract Glow Paint, gave it a really good shake, and then I painted over the top of the white and the Nurgling Green. The idea of course is to make that white really pop but also transition the other colours all together. So I just sort of gave the whole thing a little bit of a coat. And then all I had to do was get the black paint and just black in all of the black areas where it got a little messy. And here they are all finished. I'm really happy with how they came out. Now I did consider painting the black area in a different way. I actually experimented in the test stage. I tried painting a star filled on the black area, I tried painting it dark green, I tried a purple, 
nothing looked right apart from black because as I said they're just not supposed to be there they're in hyperspace and then they are phasing in so that's how I imagined them and I think I pulled off the effect but what do you think of them let me know in the comments box below and here's the Hexmark Destroyer conversion video for you to watch next. Uh -huh.